Um, why can't we prove the stories of the Qur'an like the splitting of the sea with Moses? Um, first of all, whether we can prove that or not, this is something to be studied. A lot of times when you do really careful study, you discover things that you never imagined to find. And um, if the sea opens up like that, and then the children of Israel go through, and then it closes back, I mean, what evidence are you going to have after that? Um, I'm not sure. Uh, but there are lots of things to look at. And, you know, if you look at the, if you take the human record seriously, as for that which benefits human being, it remains in the earth. That has different interpretations. But, you know, I believe that we, you know, um, as Muslims, are people who need to, we, have a, we are beginning in this time to use the treasures that have been brought to us in the 19th and 20th century. In the 19th and 20th century, human beings gain knowledge of science, they gain knowledge of methodology, they gain knowledge of history like they had never had before. And we have interpretations of that. And those interpretations are often ones that are not especially profound and they're not necessarily the interpretations of believers. But when you look at history, you can also find different things. So don't ever say that you can't prove it. You know, once we begin to look at these things, especially using archaeology and other things like that, then you know, maybe we will find things there. But we believe in this because it is revealed to us and because it is possible. In terms of what is talked about, it is not impossible. It is contrary to custom. It is contrary to customary experience. But God rules the world of possibility absolutely. He does whatever He wills. So we believe that. And inshallah we can affirm that. Things like the flood too, you might ask the same question about the flood. Um, we'd have to know how to study things, have to know what to look for. We have to imagine it properly. One of the interesting things about the flood is that everybody on earth practically believes in it. All Native Americans believe that there was a universal flood and that they came to Turtle Island, you know, to the Americas after that. The Saxons believed in it, the Indo-Europeans believed in it, the Babylonians believed in it, the Sumerians believed in it, the Chinese believed in it, the Hindus believed in it. The, the exception in human history is to find people who did not mention it. Not necessarily that they didn't believe in it, like the ancient Egyptians. The ancient Egyptians, we have no record that they believed in a flood. Okay, so uh, why is that the case? Maybe they didn't know. Maybe they didn't have that in their knowledge. But then also this was the land of the Nile. And the Nile was the giver of life. And the Nile flooded. And when the Nile used to flood, especially before human beings began to live here. It flooded for hundreds of kilometers in all directions, and it was impossible to live here. And in order to live in the Nile Valley, which begins, you know, after the Sahara becomes desert, you know, 4000 BC, 3500 BC, you already have pharaohs, you know, then you have to have a complete change of the social system in a way that really requires prophecy. It's a radical change in human life, but you've got to be able to have the blessing of the flood and to benefit from the flood and not be destroyed by it. So therefore, when I see that the ancient Egyptians are an exception, then I would say, but also these are people who have a certain belief about their flood. 
So these are things, inshallah, to be studied. And may we study these things carefully. May we have methodologies to do that. And may we be believers. Bi-idhni ta'ala.